Greetings viewers, welcome to my channel, and today's video is about how to properly bias the tubes in your tube amplifier. This is my tube amplifier, it is a PV-VB3. It was made in the mid-early uh, 2000s, and they only made it for a few years, and then they uh, went to the Michael Anthony signature head, which is essentially the same head, but red and a few different things here in the preamp section. But it is one beautiful looking amp, and it sounds great too. Now, throughout my learning process, I learned that there's a lot to biasing your tubes properly. And a lot of the older amplifiers, they gave you test points in the back where you can connect your multimeter to, and you can test out where, what the tubes are doing. Unfortunately, there was an old school method of just measuring the bias voltage, and that alone is not enough to make sure that your tubes are set properly. What you're going to require to do the job properly is what's called a bias probe. And I got a pretty sophisticated one from Eurotubes. I'll show that in a moment. But you can also make your own. Okay, guys, we're here. And I'm a little defeated at the moment. And not really the fault of anyone, but it's something that you never really know until you come across it. I have a very unique amplifier here. And the reason why, I will go into a little bit of detail, but here's the tool that I am not going to be able to use. This is a Eurotubes Pro 1 bias probe. It is probably the most sophisticated bias probe I've ever seen and kind of the reason why I wanted it. It's a nice plug and play. Uh, no, you don't really have to think about anything. You just plug it in. It runs off the power of the amplifier. That's what makes it convenient. There's no batteries and it will tell you the plate voltage. It'll tell you the plate current. And then I got the upgraded one where it'll actually flash and tell you the wattage of the, for your power dissipation. But as I mentioned, this runs off the power of the amplifier. And specifically, it is looking for AC voltage on your heater circuit, or pin 3, to power the circuitry inside this device. And for 99.9% .9 of all tube amplifiers, that's what's going to be found in the amplifier. So this would work just fine. The VB3 that I have here is a unique amplifier. I found out after contacting John Fields, uh, he is actually one of the des main designers that actually designed this amp when PV came out with it, and it turns out that this has a unique po power supply. It's a what's called a switch mode power supply, and it, that's what makes it very light. This thing only weighs 37 pounds, but as a result, when they were designing the amp, the heater circuit on pin 3 is regulated DC voltage, which unfortunately this device will not work on dc voltage it's expecting ac voltage i'm gonna have to uh send this on back so andrew over at Eurotubes and i we kind of kind of had her scratching our heads here a little bit and we were able to figure out that issue thank you to john thank you to andrew and uh, what andrew's going to do is i'm going to send this back to him he's going to give me a regular uh old run-of-the-mill bias probe with this end on it and then the two wires and then i'm going to use my meter here set to milliamps to properly set the bias current on the tubes here so in the next segment i'm going to go and do that and show you okay and here we go with the euro tubes more basic bias probe here and i have it set to amps currently i actually popped the fuse on my little 400 milliamp range there so i'm gonna have to fix that but uh i also am showing you the bias voltage of negative 45 and a half volts in order to get 25 milliamps per tube and that looks to be right where i need to be and we're just going to let this run for a little bit and make sure that that amperage draw stays stable and i'm going to call this job done so thank you everyone for all the help and if any questions please leave a comment in the description below cheers